Hello friends. Today we will try to understand one more concept that is Hawala. We as an individual, a company, a firm, an institution often require to transfer money from one place to another place. When there was no development earlier, the money was physically carried from one place by a man to deliver it to another place. But as the development took place, we started sending money through post offices by way of money orders. Then there is a widespread network of banks and through banks we have started sending money from one place to another place. That may be in the form of giving a check, issuing a draft and so on. As the technology is developed, we can transfer this amount by way of RTGS or NEFT or wire transfer. And now we can even transfer the money online. Now there are various apps which are developed and by linking that app to our bank account, we can even transfer the money on mobile phone also. There is mobile banking too. But in all these cases, as we find, this process of transferring money from one place to another place requires time. That is one constraint. Second, it has some cost. The transferer has to bear some cost, pay some expenses, some commission to the bank. Similarly, the transferer as well as the transferee should have their bank accounts. And for getting the bank accounts, they must have their KYC provided to the bank. If the transfer has to take place from one country to another country, from one currency to another currency, well, we have to convert that currency. And there are a lot of government regulations for transferring foreign currency. These are some of the limitations. So is there any alternative to this? parallel channel to this for transferring money from one place to another place. Friends, yes, there is one alternative channel to this which is called as Hawala in which no physical transfer of money takes place. The money is not carried physically from one place to another place by a person. Then how it works? It does not require any bank account also. It, this Havala transaction works on two pillars. One pillar is the trust. The transferor has the trust to the, on the Havala Dar or the broker to whom he hands over the money. And the second pillar is the network that this broker has at different places in the country and outside the country. So the trust and the network are the two pillars. For transferring this money from by way of Havala, there is no entry made, there is no document required to be done. Like in the bank, we have to write the check, get the demand draft, no documentation for Havala. Similarly, this transfer takes place in minimum time and with limited cost. As there is no involvement of bank, well, you are not required to have your bank account. There is no need to provide the papers for KYC. So when this becomes profitable, to whom? Basically, when you have to transfer money from one currency to another currency, from one country to another country, there are so many restrictions put up by the governments of different countries for transfer of money. So this foreign exchange restrictions may create some limitations for transfer of money from one place to another, one country to another, in one currency to another. In such cases, well, you can hand over local currency to the broker and the broker will give the currency, equivalent currency, to the receiver in another country. This is one benefit. Secondly, if you have to transfer the money from one country to another country and that another country has no developed banking system. In that case also, this Havana transfer may be useful.
once you understand the whole system of Hawala, I am sure you must have noticed one important thing and that is in Hawala there is no entry. In Hawala there is no bank involved. In Hawala the name of the transferer and the transferee is not disclosed to anybody else than the broker. Hence, those people who don't want to disclose their identity, number one. Secondly, those people who don't have the money which is on record to transfer, well, these people can take the can make use of this hawala that we find. Of course, there is white hawala also. You can send money which is on record through hawala. But in India, there are restrictions on the maximum amount to be transferred in cash. And hence, generally, it is said that Havana transactions are used for transferring black money, unrecorded money, unaccounted money from one place to another place. Similarly, those who want to avoid the tax may transfer this through Havala so that there is no record of this transfer, receipt or payment. Thirdly, if you have to send money in foreign currency, then you have to follow a number of rules and regulations of the government. In order to avoid that, well, one can make use of Havala way of transferring the money. In few countries, very few countries in the world, this Havala is legal and they give the license also to the brokers but in many countries including USA, India, Pakistan well this Havala is illegal and hence naturally it is very risky because if the money is not transferred if there is any problem in transferring this money the transferer or the transferee cannot take legal recourse. They cannot go to the law, cannot go to the court and get their claim settled. So this is one limitation, one risk. In spite of this risk, well, many Indians, particularly the South Indians working in Gulf countries, they send money, they prefer sending money from that country to India through Havala. Of course, it carries a risk and naturally therefore not only for the transferer and transferee but also for the Indian economy this Havala transaction may create some problems. Hence government should try to have a control on these Havala transactions. That's all regarding Havala. Let us meet in the next week with some new concept again. Thank you.